So this is the rear of the boat. You're looking at the starboard uh, corner at the stern and you can see the drip damage to the pine wood from the uh, crack that we fixed on day one. Well, I say fixed, we put some tape over it. Might need a bit more than that later on. Uh, going around, you can see the stairs down into the boat and now you see the sort of first little technical um, oversight from somebody a few years ago. This, after about three hours of research last night, I discovered was a Volvo Penta MD21A. To service an MD21A, you do most of the work from the front and the port side, the, the left side as you see it now. Um, the left side is a storage cupboard with the batteries and the front of it is a wall. So that's not particularly um, ideal. So we're going to strip out some of this woodwork this morning and make ourselves a walkway so we can get right the way around the engine. The other thing I want to show you, I don't know how well you can see this, but down into the bilge at the back we've been taking quite a lot of uh, water out the front and that of course sits the boat more on its back. Uh, the water here is uh, yeah, about 18 inches deep and at the bottom of that 18 inch deep lake in the bottom of the back of the boat is my screwdriver. So that's the first job of the day. Here we go with the first five buckets of uh, water out of the back of the boat. We're only about halfway done. Uh, it's very, very black. It's very, very oily. I'm going to have to dispose of this properly. No way is that going over the side of the boat. Um, I suppose the obvious question is where did the oil come from? My feeling right now is the engine is sound and that this is just 50 year old gunge from the bottom of a fishing boat. Now if we take a look down at the front of the engine, the bit that I sort of said you need to get to for servicing, you can see this sort of uh, yellow liquid in the bottom of that jar. That's meant to be empty and I suspect that hasn't been emptied for a very very long time. That's the excess water that the, uh, comes off the engine. Below and around the back of that, if I can point to it here, you've got the fan belt and look at the give on that. You're going to be able to move that about five millimeters. Yeah right. Something tells me that this engine hasn't been serviced for a very, very long time. Okay, I've gone on a little uh, detour here. Um, I'm trying to get to the bilge under the engine, so I decided to take the front panel off and uh, I will through the day probably take the rest of this off. Unfortunately if you look at the top right hand corner you can see the electrics have been um, screwed onto this uh, piece of wood that uh, we want to take off. I've now finished stripping out all of the inside right to the back of her. She kind of looks huge actually now. Got the engine in the middle, you just need to build a box around that. The main thing is I've got as much space as I need to really spend some time with that engine and service it properly. But before we go there, I need to do something else. As you can see, I've acquired quite a large pile of rubbish. This actually conveniently matches the other pile of rubbish that I've got up there. 
So, as soon as the temperature goes plus something and the roads stop having black ice all over them, I'll get the bicycle out with the trailer and start to pull all this stuff away. Well that concludes my three day little Easter adventure on Palin. As you can see, I've ripped everything out that I need to rip out for now. And the next thing I need to do is get all that rubbish off the boat and then to open up as many hatches and windows on her the first time we get a few warm days, let the air go through her, let her start to dry out a bit. Then we can start to look at the engine preferably when it's plus zero, so I don't freeze with a spanner in my hand. And, uh, yeah, I never did find that screwdriver in the build, so I need to finish that at some point, and it's down there somewhere. <laughs>